right. Uh, welcome to the sixth episode of Potainer's Brewing Talks podcast. Uh, we even got our own fancy coasters now. Uh, we're moving up in life. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I missed you. I haven't seen you in a yeah, while. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. We've both been busy. Yeah, I just came back from Germany for Bra Bavial, which was amazing. Um, I think I added a, another keg to my six pack. Right. Um, had some great beer, a lot of Wiener Schnitzel. Um, enjoyed my time there. Uh, where, where have you been? What have you been up to? So I've been sort of, I've been everywhere, man, I guess. Uh, <laughs> so I, I've been to uh, Winnipeg. I did a uh, lecture there for the MBAA. Um, what kind of lecture? The lecture basically was on one-way kegs. It wasn't, it was, it was uh, you know, it was sponsored by Patain. And we, co- we cover about all one-way kegs. When you do an MBA talk or whatever, you can't actually talk about your product sure. or promote your product. You just have to talk about uh, that. As you know, I've been with the M- doing the MBA stuff for years now, and uh, I even got to sit in one of your classes. Yeah, you got to sit one of your classes. And actually, yeah. you you went to a class as well, didn't you? And for engineering. Yeah, no, that was great. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, two week class up in uh, Madison. Yeah, I, I recommend that to anybody that wants to open a brewery that's running a brewery. It, it gives you the ins and outs on. Every operation you need from how to plug things in for electricity, gas, right to canning, kegging lines, how to clean tanks. That was that was a great course. The MBA yeah. is awesome. Yeah, they, they are. I, I mean, I've been a member for many years, and I've been lecturing for them. And I think the the beauty of the MBA is MBAA is that it's people sharing their knowledge. There's no there's no right. uh, yeah. you know everybody there sharing their knowledge, and and I'm sort of grateful that Patina has allowed me to continue to do this. Uh, so, and, and I think it's important that if you're in the industry, regardless of whether it be coffee, kombucha, beer or whatever, uh, you need to give back. You need to share your knowledge with people. This, this, He's such it, a great guy. Yeah. I just like, I like the sound of my own voice. That's what it is. So it, it's That's the podcast. It's the podcast, yeah. So, but it's... It's something I think that uh, we feel that we need to do, and I'd say Patina are great with that. So um, I did. Uh, I teach three times a year at the Niagara Brewing uh, College as well, and uh, we also, uh, well, through our uh, distributor up there called Genray, um, actually provide all the kegs for their project brew um, thing. So they actually, each of the students there, each semester, or when they're finishing semester, they brew some beer, they put it into uh, our kegs, and there's a big party and there's oh, a big no way. Yeah, it's great. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, so uh, we've been a big supporter of that. And actually, uh, one of the reasons they started to look at our kegs is that they also teach about filling and back pressures and so forth. And the beauty of the old potato keg is you can see what's going on inside. So you know what yeah, <laughs> right. right. Yeah. So uh, good learning tool. Right. Yeah. So yeah. And um Did you get to try some of the beer from uh, the students? Yes. We actually when I was there last time, um they produced three stouts, all with different yeasts. Okay. And it's just, a, a, it was exactly the same wort that they were derived from. And the dis- difference between them was amazing. And they asked me to select the one that I liked. Okay. And the one that I liked was uh, brewed with uh, an English yeast. Oh. So it's like a DNA <laughs> test. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. So, <laughs> it was amazing, really. <laughs> but uh, it, it, it it's a great place to go to. If you ever get a chance to go to up to Niagara, uh, a technical college area, they have a brewing teaching uh, brewing college. They have a culinary college there, which is ph- phenomenal. They have a wine college there, uh, cannabis now. What? And a distillery. So you can actually go up there and, and, and probably spend the whole day going around these different places and, it, and it's, it's good fun but the, can i do that talk the next time when it comes up? <laughs> well we were going to have you up but it, it, we decided it would be a bit of a problem so, you know the we, border might have a problem well, but, uh, it, it, you know foreign relationships <laughs> and so forth you know you got to watch what that, you tell so. what are you trying to tell <laughs> nothing 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 at all so so uh that sounds so, like an awesome trip so what we've been today we've been actually working on a, a video together right you, yeah you're using your your magical uh, camera skills, and we've yeah. been uh, doing a video on something we developed called the uh, AB1. This is the AB1. It's a botana filling. Uh, it'll fill any keg. 
but it's, we designed it. It has a pump on it already built in, etc. And we've designed this basically for uh, a lot of our customers who don't have filling equipment. Uh, it fills volumetrically and... Um, as I say, it has a pump. You don't need positive head on it. So you can actually fill directly out, out of a cask, for instance, with with this uh, machine. Um, so uh, we have AB1, to do it. Uh, the Andy Brewer yeah, yeah. edition yeah, well, uh, designer right here. Well, I got to name it too, so I guess there's a bit of conceit there. But that's, that's your star that you found? That's my star. That's <laughs> what I'm sitting there. I'll take it to bed with me. Though, <laughs> but it's, uh, it, it's, it's a good little machine, and it, as I say, it's, it's great. So... Uh, we're actually in our new St. Louis office, right? Yeah. Um, came down here last night. Uh, like Andy said, we actually shot the instructional video, uh, just like a rundown of how to use AB1, which was super easy because it's a super easy machine to use. Um, get it set up, standard power, hook up some compressed air, um, press start, and you're volumetrically filling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like your new digs. This is uh, it's nice and it's the big. St. Louis office where yeah, we're going to be big. doing a uh, whole bunch of more designs for filling and dispensing stuff. Like I said, you know, we keep reiterating it over and over and over. We don't just sell you a keg. We help you get your product into the keg and we help you get product out of the keg. Uh, but yeah, we're doing some cool stuff here. Right. Um, and you were talking about the pump, which I love about this because – We've in the past done trials with people, mm. um, not mostly breweries, but coffee, kombucha, right. wine guys only have tanks. Yeah. And they're only, you know, steeping coffee. Right. They don't really have any other equipment. Um, and when we did that trial from Wisconsin at uh, a great winery, which was great, was that we actually used the pump on the machine to move product to a different tank. Yes, yes. And then we used the pump. To actually fill. Exactly. And yeah. like I said, it's just you plug it in, you right. put compressed air on it, and you're ready to roll. Um, I, I know I've ran into the past a lot of times where people don't have the equipment you need. Right. And as you can see, it's sitting on the tabletop. I mean, it's yeah, small. Like, carry it in your car. What I love about it is because we do do trials with a lot of people mm. where they want to get their product in our kegs. And I can throw that in the back of my car, drive to their spot, pull it out. My back doesn't hurt. Um, right. You can clean through it. So you do a, a CIP, bring the product in, and away you go. So, you know, it, it, talking about challenges, do you remember that, Phil, that we did at uh, that coffee company in Missouri? Oh, yeah. Right. So th this this <laughs> coffee company, they wanted to do nitrogenized coffee, uh, uh, which is great. And they were only going to be doing it locally. They weren't, you know, national dis distribution or anything like that. And uh, Just for his drive through Just for his drive through Yeah. And he didn't have a tank, did he? So we had to he find a tank. Five-gallon bucket. Five-gallon bucket. And we, we had to put a spout on it. We, we got a little chugger pump, which is uh, a, a, a small home brewer's pump. But even then, we had to raise up the tank yeah. to get positive head. Now, with this machine, actually, you could just put the hose in the top of the tank and it would siphon it up through and it, and you could pump it and you fill it at a reasonable rate. So it does give uh, people like that the opportunity. And, and, you know, I've done fillings at a winery out in California where we were filling from a cask, right, okay. directly from a cask. Um, we didn't take the wine into a tank. And the only way that we could actually do it, we, we were actually um, manually filling, is that we put the tank on a fork truck, lifted the, sorry, the cask as high as we could to get some positive head on there, right? <laughs> and you can't get a lot really on a fork truck. You guys are using the moon. Yeah, you yeah. Can, right, you're going all the way baby. up. And, <laughs> yeah. And then the guy literally had to siphon the liquid so that we could get a siphon on the thing. Well, with this, we, we could just put that into the, uh, in the bung hole and uh, just suck straight out of it so it's good. that sounded really dirty yeah i mean I'm, yeah, it did, yeah. <laughs> i thought about that as i said it and i realized what i said but never mind but uh yeah so we're we're all about I, i'm in a great position now with with patina they're giving me this uh leverage to sort of develop stuff um thank god yeah, yeah and, and, and to be honest it. you know when you're dealing with breweries and so forth and you're dealing markets that already have kegs already have filling equipment uh, dispensing equipment 
is, is fine. Yeah, they know what they're doing. Exactly. But we're, we're going into markets now where, you know, the dispensing is an issue. You know, they may not even have gas available. So uh, this is uh, – we're, we're doing a lot of that stuff. We're actually going to be employing an engineer pretty soon, uh, basically to – so that can – keep me on the straight and narrow i guess and so i don't go too far over to one side but that help us develop this equipment i think it's uh it's a great thing that we're not just a widget uh, seller you know we're not just selling a something and walking away and um i i would you know we, we just recently did a, a video um or well, we didn't do it but uh a new Kent winery oh, right it's a great video if you get awesome. a chance we'll, yeah. we'll have the link on it afterwards and they talk about how the fact that Patane actually went there and helped them fill the first time. It shows actually this machine in, in operation. Sure does. And, um, you know, all our salespeople are great. You know, they, they, can, they, they're, uh, they can go in the brewery and they can fill, you know. so Yeah, luckily we had uh, Kelly for that video, our, yeah. our, our, our handsome salesman. Yeah, our handsome salesman. I mean, after me. But, yeah, I know. It's sickening, isn't it? No, that video is awesome. I yeah. love how it shows, like you said, we – we helped fill, right, and then uh, they were doing wine and kegs, right, and then they were bringing them to like a ballpark and uh, a racetrack, race track, yeah, and they're pouring wine on tap, and it's just it's great to see how it makes the producer happy and it makes the end user happy, yeah. uh, the person pouring it because it makes their lives easier yeah. too, and the consumer I think too, yeah, because you know like they say, it, 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 you can actually go up there. And get a glass of wine without having to wait a long period of time. So, and it's going to taste just as good as the first glass that was poured, instead it, of exactly. having a bottle sitting in the fridge and yeah. getting all stale and whatever. A clean fill every time. Clean right? fill every, every time. time. Clean pour every time. So you know, I actually talked about Kelly. So Kelly is uh, he's uh, looks after our southeast area. He's actually a brewer, right? Uh, you've been working in breweries for years, right? Installing uh, equipment and so forth. But uh, we went to a place in Louisville. Um, this week, actually, where we were... What were you guys doing there? We were carbonating, trying to... We had a customer there who, who'd never done carbonation before. Okay. They, they produce a lot of different uh, beverages for... Contract beverages for people. And they had a, a someone who's a customer of ours who their contract's uh, filling for, and they want to, um, to carbonate the product. So we did some experimentation of carbonating actually in the keg. In the keg, okay. In the keg using a, a different machine, the CJ1, which is a, a, a bigger version of this, also does uh, CO2 purging and so forth. Um, and then we, we're also experimenting about carbonating in line as we fill as well. That's what I'm uh, used to. Yeah. And uh, also the, we, we're doing some work. Um, uh, we were using a, a, a small wart cooler because we know that – with with product, for instance, is that pasteurization is something that some people would like. Sure. It's very expensive to do. Obviously, uh, you know, flash pasteurization, we work with other types of pasteurization like HPP, et cetera. But um, so one of the things we looked at is, okay, if you start with a hot product and, it, and the, the product is hot so that basically it, it's, it's sterile. Killing all the bugs. Killing all the bugs. You run it through a cooling system directly into our filling because obviously the keg can't take uh, hot temperatures and you don't want to fill any type of keg right. with hot temperatures. Yeah. And you you cool it in on its way to the keg. And we did a little bit of experimentation with that. We didn't get as far as we'd like, but it's promising. And, and uh, so... And you guys were just using like a little home brewer heat exchanger? Yeah, he bought a small one. I, I've got a, a... I said to her, I've got a bigger one than you. But uh, <laughs> it's just a double, double one. This podcast is rated R. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for this guy. But uh, anyway, it's um, it's something we're looking at. I think that we, it, it's something that can help a lot of customers because, you know, for shelf life, et cetera, the, sure. you know, they, they obviously... You know, you can't tunnel pasteurize these kegs. You don't want to heat them or yeah. whatever. But, uh, yeah, we could look at d doing that. So we're, there's a lot of experimentation we're doing here. But fortunately, in this facility, uh, we've got floor drains. Uh, we've got sinks. We've got hoses. We've got all, everything here. You've so. got some fresh dicks here. I like it. Yeah, yeah. it's nice, isn't it? I haven't yeah. got a key. Yeah. He's, he, we're even allowed him <laughs> in uh, and uh, giving him the security <laughs> code. I did give him I a still know you got me the wrong security code. No, no, I, I gave so you, this is the first time I get here. I, 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 gave, I gave you a different security code because I can track you in and out that way. <laughs> cameras turn on right got, away. And I've got cameras <laughs> that I can see what's going on too. So, 
But uh, anyway, but I don't keep much beer in here, so we're, that's we're, true. Uh, yeah, I'll probably down the road. Yeah, you'll yeah. be down the road. Yeah. <laughs> so. so we've both been busy, I guess. Right? Yeah. I mean, you've been doing a lot with uh, with Brow. You've been helping me out on stuff, and uh, yeah, things are going good. No, things are going good. Things are going great. Um, really uh, hitting it hard for the end of the year. Yeah. Um, and this was a great Christmas present from Thank You Pertainer. This yeah, is, thanks very much. Yeah, This is, this is going to be awesome. Yeah. I, I can't wait for us to uh, show off some of our uh, new innovations that are going to be coming out here pretty soon Yeah, yeah. to make everybody's lives easier once again from the producer to the guy who's drinking beverages. So that's going to be awesome. Sure. I, I can't wait. Uh, well, I'm happy we got to see each other. I missed you. It's been too long. Too long. We'll have to get together um, again. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we do have some more good events coming up for us. I know we're going to have a team meeting uh, in Panama next month. Yeah, that'd be fun. Um, so we should do another podcast from there. Yeah, uh, we've got uh, new teams down in uh, South America. Yeah, which is great. Uh, which we've, we've had them up here. We did some training together, right? Yeah, with yeah, them, yeah. So. yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, the team around Chicago. And, and uh, we'll get together and we'll... Uh, We'll so come up with some good ideas. Hopefully. I'm thinking for our next one, we're going to make everybody jealous. We'll have to like find a nice beach or something, yeah. and we'll have some great cocktails and maybe some uh, ocean or uh, some the Panama Canal in the background. Be nice, yeah. 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 All right. Sounds good. All right. Hey, thanks, guys, again uh, for listening to us ramble. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, AB1 is amazing. Named after this guy who's amazing in a great spot. Um and like Andy said, uh, our new cat video we're going to put out. You guys have to watch this. It, it turned out so great. Phenomenal. Um, like I was blown away from it. Uh, I think it was better than the Joker. Uh, that movie. <laughs> Seriously. Um, <laughs> no, but thanks for staying with us and tuning in. Um, we love bringing you stuff like this. We just want to make your lives easier. Um, episode six is over. Yeah. I'm going to hit the road back to Chicago. Right. Uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, Brewertalks.com. Um, Tanner, we're out. We're out. All right. Good right. stuff. See you next time. Do deal. See you. Thank you.